Is he mad with me, Caesar? Is he mad with me, Caesar? Is he mad with me, Caesar? Okay, so today we're going to learn all about solving proportions. And the first thing you need to know is just what is a proportion? So I have in my notes that it's just a part to whole relationship, which you're very familiar with because of fractions. So your knowledge about fractions is really going to come in handy for this lesson. So come along with me to the grocery store to learn all about proportions. Let's try our first real world proportion problem. So I have a recipe that calls for three limes and six lemons. And let's move over to the whiteboard to start working with this proportion. All right, so I decided to go ahead and make a fraction of these limes to lemons proportion. And I mentioned that this recipe calls for three limes and six lemons. And now I want to solve this proportion for, let's say I want to make more recipes and I wanna get 12 limes. So our job is gonna to be to find C, the amount of lemons that I need to be the same proportion of three to six. Okay, so I want you to think back to your knowledge of equivalent fractions. And what would you do in the past when you're looking at an equivalent fraction like this and you've got a missing part? So what would you do with this 3 and 12? Okay, some of us might be thinking, well, we look for a pattern. So 3 times what? equals 12. Yeah, 3 times 4. So then uh, also think back to your knowledge of equivalent fractions. So if I do something to the numerators, what do I do to the denominators? Yeah, same thing. So this is also going to be times 4. So then what does C equal in this proportion? Okay, awesome. C equals 24. So now we can look at the proportion like this. We can look at 3 over 6 is equal to 12 over 24. Okay, great job solving your first proportion. Okay, now I'm going to give you an apple problem. So let's say I am baking an apple pie and I need some Granny Smith apples and some Honey Crisp. And the proportion I'm going to give you is two to three. And before we solve this one, I also want to bring up a couple of videos ago was my uh, ratios and ratio tables. And so that all, that type of math is also really helpful when you're setting up proportions. We were writing ratios like this, two to three. But a fraction is also a ratio, so you can write this either way. So I just wanted to bring that up. Feel free to go check those videos out if that would help. Okay, now I'm gonna give you, let's say I'm trying to, once again, increase my recipes, make more than one apple pie, and I bought 14 Granny Smith apples, and I want to know, A, the amount of Honeycrisp apples I'm going to need to buy to keep my proportion, keep my ratio uh, the right way. So I don't want to mess up this recipe. You know, I don't want to buy not enough Honeycrisp apples. I don't want to buy too many. I want it to still be a two to three ratio of Granny Smith to Honeycrisp. Okay, so why don't you pause the video, see if you can find the pattern or rule, and then find A, the amount of Honeycrisp apples. Okay, let's check your work. So you probably looked for a pattern first. Two times seven is 14. So I'm gonna do that to the Honeycrisp apples also. And then that means A equals 
Yep, you got it, 21. So that means I'm gonna need to buy 21 Honeycrisp apples to keep that ratio going. So let's write the, the proportion with the number instead of A. All right, that looks great. I'm seeing a pattern still, times seven, times seven. They look like equivalent fractions, so I know I did a good job. Okay, so another type of proportion problem we can do is based on money as well. So we can say that, you know, a pack of 20 raspberries costs $5 at the grocery store, and we wanna know how much one raspberry costs. So this is very similar to my last video on unit rates. So this is looking like a proportion, but it's also the same type of math we were doing in the last video where we were finding the cost for one thing. Okay, so now what we can do is look for any sort of pattern that you see, just like we did with the last problems. So how do I get from 20 down to one? Yeah, I divide by 20. So I could do that to this part right here, right? Does anyone see another pattern going on that we could use to help us out? Oh, okay, some of you might have noticed a pattern going like within this fraction going down 20. How do you get from 20 down to five? Okay, divide by four. I kind of feel like I wanna go with that one because this one is a bit easier for us to, to do. It'll go a little faster. So let's do that on this side. Same thing to both sides, keeps it balanced. So we're gonna do one divided by four. And so how much do you think, how much money do you think goes right here? What would be one divided by four? Okay, so some of us knew um, especially if you watched that last video, we did something very similar that it would be 25 cents because if you have one hole and you break it up into four pieces, then you've got this decimal number. Uh, but you know, you could also, if you were feeling a little bit like, I don't know uh, what one divided by four is, you could always just set it up. So already you can see that, oh, that's too small. We don't have enough to make a group of four, so we're gonna need to put a point zero on the end. And we also talked about this in the last video. Then I can bring the decimal up and I can keep going. So I can make two groups. Four times two is eight. I can subtract. Okay, then I'm gonna put another zero on there because it helps me to keep this going so I can bring down and then check my groups of four again. Four groups of five. Four times five is 20. Oh, this is gonna work out perfectly. Okay, there's no remainder, no repeating decimal. It's just 25 cents per raspberry. So that's the unit rate, but just written as a proportion. I hope this video helps you in your math class or at home. See you next time.